Dan Barker is a great counter-apologist now, but he used to be as religious as a person could possibly be. I was called to the ministry. I preached the gospel for 19 years. Mission work, evangelism, Christian songwriter. I'm still getting royalties from those Christian musicals, which is kind of fun. And I was a true believer. I really did believe it. I prayed. I talked with Jesus. I got goosebumps. I felt this father figure. I was born again. I, you know, I read the Bible. I believed it was an inerr errant word of God. All of that was so wonderful and moving to me. And if I was not a true Christian, nobody is. I truly believed it and lived it. And doesn't the Bible say you shall know them? by their fruits. You don't judge yourself whether somebody's a true Christian or not. You know them by their fruits. Apologists will often claim that atheists who say they were Christians were never really Christians, or that they never really felt the presence of the Holy Spirit because when someone genuinely has those experiences, evidence and arguments should never be able to convince them that such experiences aren't real. But I changed my mind, and I'm not going to tell you that whole story, but I eventually learned after four or five years of a gradual migration that there is no evidence for a God. Zero. In fact, Dinesh agrees with me. During our debate in Harvard uh, last year, Dinesh said, I am an agnostic too. We don't know if there's a God, Dinesh said. I admit it. Dinesh is kind of like uh, another Catholic, uh, Blaise Pascal, uh, the mathematician philosopher, who said the same thing. He was an agnostic. He said, we can't know, we don't know, but you're better off believing. I don't understand how a person could just choose to believe a proposition because they think it would be good to believe it rather than because they genuinely find it convincing. I couldn't just start believing in Bigfoot if someone offered to pay me to believe in Bigfoot. I could, however, lie and say that I believe in Bigfoot so that person would give me the money anyway, but we all know that Dinesh D'Souza wouldn't do something as shady and dishonest as that. So Dinesh says he thinks, because most people on the planet are believers, he says, what's wrong with belief? Uh, Pascal and Dinesh are what you might call theistic agnostics, and that's a very honest position, by the way. I admire that and respect that because he's not pretending more than he can support. I am what you would call an atheistic agnostic. Atheism is simply the absence of theism. Remember that the next time some derpy kumquat tries to tell you that you're not an atheist if you're an agnostic. I'm also an atheist because there's no good argument for a god. Bertrand Russell looked at all the arguments, especially the ontological argument and the teleological and the cosmological and all that, and we do debates about these things all the time. And Bertrand Russell basically concluded, you know, these are all boiled down to bad grammar is all it is. None of those arguments work, and we'll talk about a little of them later. I'm also an atheist because there's no coherent definition of a god. How can you debate if something exists if you can't even define what it is. And every attempt to define a god that I've encountered ends up sounding either completely incomprehensible to me or vacuous. The pantheist conception of a god is simply the universe itself. Conceptions like Spinoza's that don't see a god as a conscious person is a weird thing to call a god. There is no agreement among believers as to the nature of this god or the moral principles of this god. Every one of them can open the Bible and show you, oh, here's what we believe. The, um, this, this church here believes that Jesus was the eternal Son of God. And that, did you know that John Calvin, a Protestant reformer, had one of his close friends, Michael Servetus, burned at the stake, a co-reformer, because Michael Servetus said, no, Jesus is not the eternal Son of God. Jesus is the Son of the Eternal God. Many Christian denominations believe that Jesus somehow existed even before he was born. Given that Jesus is supposed to be both 100% human and 100% God, which in itself doesn't make sense unless there is no distinction between being a human and being a God, how could he have existed before he was born? How is that possible for someone who was entirely human? He was killed for that. Protestants killing Protestants for heresy and for blasphemy. Catholics killing other Catholics. Catholics killing Protestants because they didn't have the truth. I'm also an atheist because there are no good replies to the arguments against a God. For example, the problem of evil. All you have to do is walk into any children's hospital and you know there is no God. Those parents are desperately praying for their children. They don't fare any better than blind chance. Many of them pray and those kids die horrible deaths. And the ones that do survive, 
uh, is no difference from those who weren't prayed for. Prayer is a failure. Prayer might make you feel better. Prayer might help lower your blood pressure. But as organic healing, prayer is a failure. A rebuttal that I've heard to this argument is that since millions of Christians are praying for sick people generally all over the world, this dilutes the additional benefit of people praying for specific people below measurability. This rebuttal essentially argues that the failure to measure the benefits of prayer does not constitute a falsification of its efficacy because its efficacy is unfalsifiable. That's a pretty weak sauce rebuttal. Also, what about famous people? When they get sick, shouldn't they get enough extra prayers to have a measurable effect? In the 1870s, Francis Galton did a a study that tested whether members of the British royal family had longer than average lifespans. Since millions of Christians around the world pray not only for the sick in general, but millions of Christians around the world also pray for the well-being of the Queen specifically, surely there should be a measurable effect if prayer has any effect at all. No such effect has been found. If the Queen catches a cold, she doesn't get better any faster than anyone else. Certainly not faster than anyone of comparable wealth. Thanks again for helping me out on Patreon.